Welcome in, guys, to Rover Sports. Hello. Hello. What a football game. Um, I can't believe it. Can I believe it? Maybe. After the kicker missed that field goal from about 32 yards, that Greek guy, I'm thinking there's no way that Alabama's winning this football game. And then the Rodrigo kid hits a 51-yard bomb. And I always want to take the ball in overtime. I like to score touchdowns, get the football. And for some reason, you know, the teams in college like to see what they need. And um, after that sack, a 16-yard sack at second and 16, and you're thinking, like, let's, you know, get a couple of yards back. You know, it's going to take a... A holy effort for this kid to make a field goal and the odds of Alabama tying that game and remaining in that game past the first overtime are very slim at that point and that kicker they had that 35 yarder the resiliency of the team to get a defensive stop and then the, have the balls to call a hail mary Seattle the four verticals and hit um one of the greatest throws I've seen ever under that kind of pressure. In fact, the throw to Calvin Ridley even it needed to be more precise. When it was third down, he's rolling to his left, and he has to throw it on third down between like five bodies of guys. And Tua, I mean, he played balls to the wall. He took chances that Jalen Hurts just could not take. And Tua just played the game like like he's always played it. He was confident. He just played it like a regular football game, even though it's the biggest moment of his life and the craziest sort of football game ever. I've never seen a backup quarterback get thrusted into the game. I was clamoring for Tua to get into the game to make it a fun game. But this kid is just incredibly special. I saw him at the Elite 11 light it up. He has such a quick release. He's so accurate. He's like Jimmy Garoppolo with his quick release, how accurate he is, the arm strength. The kid has everything, and mentally, he's something else. And that's a performance we'll never forget. I mean, coming in there in the national championship, your team down big, 13-point deficit. You can't get anything going on offense. And for him to scramble, for him to run for first down, Najee Harris was huge. Even Jerry Judy made huge catches. And then that Smith freshman with the play. Alabama's offense is going to be good for a long, long time. And just the ebbs and flows of the game. The game was legendary, I think, with Tua coming into the game because of his performance. But then Jake Fromm had his moments. You're watching two freshman quarterbacks duke it out. You're watching Roquan Smith, unbelievable defense. You're watching Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb, two of the best running backs in SEC history and all of the college football history. And Tua with the greatest performance, I think, of a quarterback that I've ever seen in college football history. I mean, we remember Garrett Gilbert going into the game, you know, when Colt McCoy got hurt in the national championship and Gilbert did okay, but, I mean, Tua, for him to just go out there and flat out, it wasn't like Georgia choked. I mean, Jake Fromm, he threw a bad interception there after Tua's interception. Um, the missed throw on third and two, uh, and then Alabama, I think, got the football back. Um And then that final drive was a thing of beauty to set it up for the winner, and that kicker, he pull hooked the shit out of that field goal, and um, when he pull hooked the shit out of it, I, I, um, I was like, the heart just sank. You're you're thinking, there's no way that Alabama's coming back and winning this thing now. You know, you're just thinking it's UGA's year. This is exactly like the Rose Bowl all over again. But Tua man wouldn't let his guys die, and um, it was an amazing football game. And for Georgia. To have the game at the Atlanta, to have the game at the Georgia Dome, to be that close to winning a championship with Kirby's second year. I mean, you're thinking a 10-2 and two season, a trip to the SEC championship, a shot at Bama, and then a New Year's Six Bowl is your expectation. And those are pretty good expectations. For them to only lose one game all year, avenge that loss, go, go run for how many yards they did against Oklahoma, battle back in that game. Find a true freshman in Jake Fromm that's not afraid of the moment, that makes big play after big play. Um, 
You know, Jake Fromm's a, a very, very good quarterback. And now you got Justin Fields coming in. You continue to recruit very well, the number one recruiting class. But uh, it's tough that Roquan Smith, and for Georgia fans, it's tough that Smith, Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle, it's tough that all these seniors, Davin Bellamy, uh, these guys that are upperclassmen, it's tough that they're not going to get to play and suit up again. And a lot of guys are going to go to the NFL draft. It's tough that one team had to lose that game. And for the sanctity of that kicker, I am pleased because now he can go ahead and he can still walk around campus and his missed field goal can now be forgiven. But um, it's all due to Tua, the bomb on second down, one of the clutchest play calls for Nick to pull Jalen Hurts, a guy who's gone 25-2, and two. tremendous coaching decision there by Nick Saban, one of the best. Nick has balls to get the job done. He did that against Clemson when he called an onside kick in the fourth quarter with Adam Griffin. And you're thinking, what the F are you doing? And he kicked the ball, and I remember that onside kick. He kicked the ball, and it went sky high in the air, and that Bama guy just caught it, you know? It was like Jay Coker against Clemson, how efficient, O.J. Howard. It was just like a legendary Alabama championship game, and it wasn't like the suffocating A.J. McCarron games when they beat LSU, when they beat, um, oh, man, when they beat the um, Notre Dame to win a championship Texas, that's five. I'm missing. Uh, I'm missing one. I think, but um, when they beat Texas, it was suffocating defense. It was Mark Ingram. It wasn't a quarterback ever going out there and winning a game like that. That's never been Nick Saban's forte. Being down a lot and finding a way to climb and get a win. I mean, that was the one game with with, uh, with Coker and um, you know um, with and OJ Howard. But you look at this football game. And uh, I'll tell you what, guys, Alabama getting in this playoff, Deron Payne just showed so much heart. Najee Harris running the football like his hair was on fire. It was an incredible game. Nicole Hardman with the catch. Sony Michelle, tons of big plays. Javon Wims making plays. Jake Fromm stepped up. And Riley Ridley, who thought he would outperform Calvin Ridley. Uh, just a game of just just. Uh, you know, back and forth and back. And it was all because of Tua Tagalavailoa. This guy coming off the bench, no experience whatsoever. He's like the chosen one. I was saying that this was the moment that Tua was going to change football forever. And I don't think anyone will ever top this performance. I mean, he's a freshman. He's never played in a playoff game, he's never started a game, he's never played, I think, more than four series in his life at the college level, and he gets thrust against NFL talent in the biggest stage of his career, on the biggest stage in sports, the national championship, the granddaddy of them all, one game, and for him to go out there and throw with pinpoint accuracy, play fast, make incredible improvisations, threading needles, I've, it was a form of art that is just so rare to see. And the kid is rare. He can quiet the mind unlike anyone I've ever seen. And if you go back to this kid in high school, if you look at the way he even did interviews after the game, thanking God, not only you know is he a stone-cold assassin, he's also salt of the earth, very religious guy that... Um, it's just, just an incredible person. You can just see that. And um, sad for the Georgia fans. I know I talked about bandwagon Georgia fans earlier. Everybody wanted to root against Alabama. I was just getting into the heat of the battle. There's tons of Georgia fans that are diehard fans. And uh, I know this one is, is going to be tough. You're not going to forget the game. But, I mean, you still got the best recruiting class in the country. You guys have the young and up-and-coming coach, a young quarterback, uh, and you guys are going to get back to the championship probably in a year or two and uh, just win the SEC. And you guys, with this defense and the style of play and the running backs that you have recruited to this university, you guys are certainly going to get a national championship soon. And being on that stage, it does nothing but help for a second-year guy in Kirby Smart that, like Nick Saban, Nick Saban won a national championship his second year. 
I mean, Kirby Smart's outperforming Jim Harbaugh. Kirby Smart right now is outperforming Urban Meyer. I mean, Georgia is a hell of a football program. Very fertile recruiting ground. But the job that he's done, I mean, it's nothing short of great and spectacular. And uh, the way he got Jake Fromm up for this game, Jim Chaney coming out throwing the ball. The first half was magnificent. Second half, you know, Alabama just came up with clutch run stops. They didn't get that creative in the passing game. They got a little conservative on the ground, I thought. And um, predictable, trying to bleed out the game. And that's how you get beat. When you stop swinging, you get beat. And after the long ball, they kind of stopped swinging to the level that they were in the first half. So game that's just going to take the life out of you. You're going to root for a team in that football game. If you're an Alabama fan, you're freaking dead. You're dead tired. This is not an Alabama win where you can pump out your chest, where you can ride the thing home comfortably like the Clemson game, like so many other games where in the fourth quarter you're ready to go celebrate. This was one that literally you had to just be you know, like on your knees praying and thinking and closing your eyes and clutching whatever furniture you had, people near you. And when that kicker missed, I mean, that's the ultimate emotional swing. You know, Alabama fans, you know, their heart just dropped. You know, they're thinking, they're trying to get their breathing down. They're trying to keep their breathing to a norm. They're trying to kneel on the ground and think, you know, when the players kneel and, oh, this is going to be it. This is going to be the kick that wins the national championship. Jalen Hurts takes the knee. Three seconds left. Perfect clock management. Right hash. Kicker likes to draw it. The snap goes down. The kick is on its way. And and it's a dead yank, and he, and he freaking missed the kick. So all the Alabama fans are probably losing their shit, you know. Just, just maybe this, maybe a thrown remote, maybe yelling. Maybe some are just clapping and saying, you know, we still got this. We're going to go to overtime. And then that kid, Blankenship, hits a 51-yarder, and you're just thinking... It's just not in the cards if their kicker hits a 51-yarder after you play the best defensive series that you can play. Uh, Just such an emotional game. It's why you love sports and lived up to the hype. And Tua Tagovailoa, if he keeps this up, he's going to be the greatest college football player to ever play. He's definitely on his way right now. Jalen Hurts, a selfless teammate. Got to give Jalen a lot of credit. Um, for the way that he handled things tonight, and and Nick teaches that, and uh, I mean for that kid Tua to come in, jokingly, you know, I was thinking, ah, Tua, they're not gonna lose this game. This kid's magic, and the kid is honestly like when you watch some Tebow games, you think there's some divine intervention, but with Tua, it, the kid is it's almost like divine intervention. Like they just don't make kids like that, and. It was special to witness that type of performance tonight from Tua Tagovailoa. We'll never see a game like that again with a backup coming in there like that, with a missed kick like that, with two epic programs in the SEC in Atlanta like that. It's one of the best games we've ever seen. And uh, for me, I think it's at the top of the list with the miss field goal and the coming back and the swing of emotions and the sack and the and the hit and the Hail Mary hit. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable game. All righty, guys. Thanks for hanging on, tuning in. Get some sleep if you can. I am still, I don't know what I'm going to do. College football's over, but it, it ended with such a bang. It was an epic, epic game.